Hello, welcome to the Poundcast. I am Doug. Today we're going to have um, Lola Blanc here. She's going to be sitting right there. But but first, we have a question that we got to settle uh, from one of the listeners regarding Brent's use of Dixie cups in his bathroom. This is from Jilm, I think. Jilm says, question for Brent. Are the Dixie cups you use to rinse after brushing just out in the open air in your bathroom? If so, aren't you worried about airborne poo particles? And the answer is, simply put, no. A uh, couple reasons why. One... Wait, uh, no what? The answer is no. They, they're not in the open? No, no, they, I'm not concerned about the poo particles. Well, are they in the open? That's the main question. Well, the yeah, question. they are kind of. They're in a stack okay. down, facing down, okay. a, f- a downward stack. So they're not sunny side actually down. open. They're sunny side down. Okay. But then I will I use... I'll use one Dixie cup multiple times, so that w- one will be up, you know, okay. and that is, I guess, vulnerable to poo particles, but, you know, I am germ conscious, but I'm selective about it, and I'm not concerned about poo particles. Okay. Simply put. I mean, look, there's things I do care about germ-wise, but some things I don't care about, and I don't care about the poo particles in my bathroom. Thank gosh. Are you? Um... No, no, I'm not. I do keep my toothbrush in a drawer. Because? Probably because of that. See, I would want to air my toothbrush out. I'd be afraid if it was in a drawer, it would develop uh, something in there that I wouldn't want, you know, mm. because it's damp. Well, it's 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 kind of like an underneath. It's a big, wide-open drawer. I, <laughs> it's not getting any mold on it. Uh-huh. Um, because I, I would, I would, you know, before it was kind of sticking up, like on the sink, like in a cup, yeah, like a toothbrush holder, yeah. But then there's just towels laying around. I feel like something's gonna brush into it. I'd rather just keep it hidden out of the way, hmm. out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. I'd rather get the poo particles on it, personally. Okay. I like it. I want it to be damp and just, you know, really be magnetized. And I, poo this particles. new toothpaste I got is black. Oh, it's, really? It's like that charcoal oh, kind okay. of Oh, okay, because I got this new toothpaste. It's brown. It's poo. Yeah. Yeah, it's brown. It's, it's, <laughs> you squeeze it out. It's the, the, new, the nozzle it's the looks trend. like a little butt, you know? <laughs> and you squeeze it out, and the Turns stuff, out the paste it's comes good out. for your teeth. This yeah, no, time. it's actually really good. And it make, and your, makes your breath smell different. Different, yeah. <laughs> it's a new take on fresh breath. Uh, before we get to the show with Lola Blanc, who is a great episode, I think, um, we want to just mention really quick that... We are sponsored in part by LVJCo.com. Louisville Vegan Jerky is where you can... Oh, wow. Is there a new flavor here, Brent? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I mean, uh-oh in a good way. There is. Oh, boy. I'm so excited. I don't even know what this one is. Uh, wow. Okay. It's called Fly By Jing Sichuan Chili Crisp. Sichuan. 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 How do you, how do you pronounce that? Sichuan. S-I-C-H-U-A-N. Sichuan, I think. Sichuan Chili Crisp. Look, LVJ Co. is the home of Louisville Vegan Jerky. That is plant-based jerky made in Louisville, Kentucky. And it is bagged in the USA in Louisville, Kentucky. And Shelf life nine Do we even need to mention bagged? Because it's it's made and bagged there. We went to the factory. We went to the plant, to the home of it all. And if you are a Poundcast pimple, which you are because you're listening now, you could get 20% off your entire order um, by using the code word Poundcast. Simple as that. And this this fly by Jing, it looks th- I like the graphics on it. They're on skateboards. Um, so is the Nashville hot chicken flavor. <laughs> that chicken's on a skateboard. You know, I just noticed this now. And the ha- and the cheddar jalapeno jerky sold out. That sucker is on a skateboard, too. They got great designs. So, you know, the thing about Louisville Vegan Jerky is that every month there's a new small batch flavor. Yeah. And so you got to just, I mean, it's exciting to know what the flavor is going to be. That's really exciting. But the other exciting thing about it is they are in limited quantities and you have to sort of snag them while they're while Yeah. They're, well, while the cool thing is, you about the, you know, you, like I said, you get the 20% off, lvjco.com. Use the code word POUNDCAST. Um, but you can also pick this stuff up. At uh, you know where I see it? I see it at the grocery store, Sprouts, mm-hmm. Whole Foods. Those are two great examples of where you can find it. Um, I'm interested in this uh, Fly by Jing. 
chili. This is, let me just read what they say here. Our, our biggest collaboration ever. Meet your taste buds, new best friend, the sensational fusion of Louisville Vegan Jerky Company and Fly by Jing's Sichuan Chili Crisp. This is where East meets West, Spice meets Spice Hugs Sweet, and Crispy meets Chewy. So this has got some crisp to it. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log on right now and get that 20% off. An explosion of mouth, mouth-watering heat, irresistible crunch, and that deliciously elusive umami edge. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for spice devotees, vegan, victual lovers, and curious foodies alike. All right, well, you get the point. Check out lvjco.com. Use the code repoundcast. Get that 20% off. This and do it now. Why do, not just do, do it, it now? while supplies last? Oh, that's the other thing. But do you want this with, small with batch. the new flavors? If yeah. you want the small batch, yeah. Um, they got uh, well, this podcast is also um, sponsored by people like you. That's right, because patreoncom slash poundcast is where you want to go to you know join our po- our Patreon. That's what's that's what's powering this show, and when you do that, you get access to Poundcast Unzipped, and today. We talked to Lola Blanc on Zipped, of course. And the only way to listen to that is by signing up for our Patreon.com slash Poundcast. No and way. on our Unzipped episode, we talked about her. We talked, you know, we got a little juicy, but we also talked about um, her <laughs> ventriloquist. There was a very path. funny moment that there's happened some, some good during stuff. that part. You don't want to miss that's, it. That's, to me, was, I thought, okay, that's the, yeah. that's the moment. So yeah. if you haven't done it by now, just... Just join the Patreon. That's how this is a mom and pop pom, poundcast. Yeah. This is how we this is how we keep it going with listeners and viewers like you. And you're gonna get access to all the old unzips from the beginning of time. And you know what else I've been up. doing lately? Yeah. This was by requ- kind of request actually. It was uh I've been well, I, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this up, but for the last three weeks I've posted new music picks so the first post was and i mentioned this we mentioned it on the show but someone yeah. kind of requested the 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 actual track list i so i put basically new tracks from this year and last year that i discovered recently and so that was that and then i then the following week tracks new tracks that were from that week that i had discovered that were new you know and then most recently i put my top 10 madonna songs in order well, by request, by request. See, the, the patreon.com slash podcast, you can't miss it. You don't want to miss this. I don't know. It's just something extra there. Here's one other thing I got to mention before we get on with the show is uh, Brett and I are going to do a live show at Dynasty Typewriter and on dynastytypewriter.com because it will be streaming for anyone who is not living in L.A. that wants to see it. And what is it? It's the premiere of Pound House. Finally... The first two episodes, we are going to screen them live at Dynasty Typewriter and DynastyTypewriter.com. That's where to go to find the tickets. Um, not only that, not only are we going to show two new episodes, the first two, all the performers, we're going to have live stand-up, all the performers were helped out on, on Pound House. We got Nick Thume. He is in episode, he's in one of the episodes. We have... Um, Gabe Ruimi, he is the camera assistant. Is gonna do stand up, you know. We got yeah. John Pellick, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He is in episode two. Do, do you say Dan Ramos? Dan Ramos. Dan Ramos. He's on, he's added to the list. He's Dave sound. Doby. He did, did. <laughs> it, Dave Doby. He is uh, he's in the show too. Is an extra. But he's in. He plays no, a no, part. he has a line. He has a line in, in episode six, but he is in, he is in episode two too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Violet Paley, I think, might do something as well. So anyway, you Nick plus Thune. Nick Thune, yeah. You, and I'm going to do a set. Brent's going to do a set. Check it out, DynastyTypewriter.com for tickets. So is that it? Should we get on with the show? YouTube.com slash The Poundcast if you want to see video of the, po- of the podcast uh, and clips as well. Um, Instagram is also The Poundcast, and so is TikTok. Straight like that. You've said it all, Brent. Now, let's and, get on with the show. We okay, we have a theme song here. Oh, we do have a theme song, yeah. This is... Um, 
It kind of an unusual one, I think. This I one guess. is very unusual by yeah. Kyle Kaifman slash Cobra Winfrey, and it's called Bass Guessers. And it's sort of a musique concrète. <laughs> It's, it's an audio of, collage. It's an audio of collage of different clips from the show. We'll, we'll play the first bit of it, and then at the end of the episode, you you'll, 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 you'll hear the whole thing. thing. Yeah. But why don't we roll the clip? Let's roll the clip, and we'll we'll be right back with Lola Blanc. Okay. You want another? Oh, uh, you want another baseline? Doom. Doom. Okay. Doom. I don't know that one. Doom. It's um. My my lips are sealed. It's not my lips are sealed. But, yeah, but I pretty much got it. When I just you want just... another baseline? <laughs> Pinball Wizard to Elton John? What's the band with the, the really good rush? Is it Rush? X, X, Y, Z. Oh, hold on, hold on. Is the Breeders Cannibal? Beck? Doom, ba- doom, doom, doom. No. That just sounded like it would be a Beck song. Duran Duran. Okay, let's try another one here. Let's start the show. This is the Poundcast. I am DJ Doug Pound. I'm hidden. Oh, there we go. You can see me now. I'm here with my co-host, Brent Weinbach, of course. Hello, Brent. Mm-hmm. Hi. Mm-hmm. And today our guest is Lola Blanc. Hello. Very exciting to have you here today. You are kind of a renaissance woman because oh, wow. I couldn't help but check your Wikipedia a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. And we're talking songwriter, musician, filmmaker, actor. Podcaster. Podcaster. This is the kind of guest that we want because this is the kind of people we are multifaceted yeah you even worked you worked with our friend bonnie mcgee yeah although not in the same room but i love bonnie same likewise she was a guest here i was gonna say she been on the podcast yeah yeah yeah. did you start what would you you started out doing music yeah i started writing songs i was a wee lass that was why i moved to los angeles did you write some pop songs for some stars? Oh, funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a song for Britney Spears, which Bonnie is a co-writer on as well. I also wrote a song for a K-pop group, but Americans don't know K-pop very well, but a very big K-pop group, okay? Behind the scenes? <laughs> the, the group not, behind the scenes? Not or the biggest one. Not it, the they are, BTS biggest is called, one. That's what that stands for, behind the scenes? I assume it would be, because that's what BTS usually stands for, <laughs> is behind the scenes. Is that not what BTS stands for? Guessing not. Oh, really? They're not. Their full name isn't behind the scenes. <laughs> Should we Google it? I think it's like big testosterone um, suckers. Suckers. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Better. I will Google it if you want. No, no, we got uh, Aaron. We'll on, Aaron. We got Aaron Google on the it. on the case. That is a good. What what does it stand for? Let's find out. BTS usually, obviously, usually. Well, I think it's it. K-pop, so it might be something like more Korean, just more Korean or more, yeah. mm, more bong out. bong. You know, it's about to get real racist. Something like that. <laughs> bong something soon. You know, it was something bong tea soon. Sure. No comment. <laughs> sung or sung. So, yeah, I think song. Bong tea song. Or soon. Beef tenderloin slurpers. <laughs> <laughs> slurpers. <laughs> when you grind it up. Um, okay, it stands for the Korean phrase Bong Tong Sun Ye and Don. Well, I was close. You were really close. I was kind of close. Shocked. Wait, the first I'm word is Bong? B A N G T A N. That's what you meant. B A N G. I I was thinking B O N G, but you know what? It's pronounced. I mean, I was I said it right. And what does <laughs> what does that mean? What does that phrase mean? Uh, translates literally to bulletproof Boy Scouts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bulletproof Boy Scouts. That's pretty sweet. That feels name. correct. That, why didn't they call that? Call them that? Well, I guess they. It makes sense. B P B S. Bulletproof. It didn't matter because they're huge. So they yeah, that's need interesting. To have, and I did not write a song for them. They don't need to be called anything. Right. Okay. What was the group? Itsy. It's a Itzy. girl group. Okay. <laughs> and girls. wait, when you said you didn't, you co-wrote this song with um, Bonnie. Yeah. You weren't in this. You didn't work together in the same room. But how did you? How did that work exactly? Pop music is so weird. Mm. Uh, I wrote the song originally for myself. My name is Lola, and it was gonna be Ooh Lola. I was gonna sing Ooh Lola. It's actually called Ooh Lala. Mm. Um, oh. <clears throat> but I wrote it with two people, and then the infamous Dr. Luke. Do you know who Dr. Luke is? Yeah. The infamous Dr. Luke uh, took the song and added people to it and changed it and made it um, be age appropriate for the Smurfs too. <laughs> huh. Wait a second. I'm, I, got a, I got questions, but go on. Yeah. Uh, 
So is this your first big break in a way? Yeah. Or did you have other Stars. Hit songs out there? Yeah. No, this was yeah, this was the f- How does it first go thing from that made people take a me song seriously. You wrote, yeah, how does it go from a song you wrote to just with the doctor order? <laughs> <laughs> uh through just like it's very boring to be honest. Producers are assigned to the right people who know the right people who are working on the right projects. It's that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. did they say to you, "Hey, we can actually make this a Britney Spears song. How do you feel about that? Did they ask you that? Yeah. And you said, yeah, okay, I'll do yeah. that. Yeah, you, they need, you need permission from the songwriters to have well, an artist come well, I mean, What I mean is, is, so, okay, you were working with somebody on the song, yeah. and then somebody, that person knew somebody that said, oh, I think we could actually get this to be a Britney Spears song. So Ammo is the name of the producer. Ammo was signed to Dr. Luke, who was handling the music for, again, the Smurfs 2 soundtrack. Uh-huh. Um, and Great soundtrack. I have it on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a blue he record. played it for Luke, and Luke was like, this would be perfect for Britney. So they asked me if I wanted it to be a Britney song, and obviously I was not going to say no. How did you feel about that, though? Having it be a song that you wrote for yourself, did, 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 was there a part of you that did feel a little bit weird about that, or sad even? Yeah, I think that's like, that is life as a pop writer. You you come into the come, the situation happens a lot where you're like, oh, this song is so good. It's a hit song. It's going to be my big break. And then they're like, it is a hit song. Let's give it to a star. And that is the choice that you have to make. And in that case, I was just like, well, I don't have any like anything big under my belt right now. And I need to have something big under my mm-hmm. belt. I will write more songs that are good. So that was that was my choice. Yeah. Uh-huh. And did that make it, did you, did it end up being worth, that was a good uh, compromise to make, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah. I, it, like, I didn't really have anything that the music industry had totally taken seriously at that point. I was like doing a record deal, but then it didn't happen. And so that was the first thing that people were like, oh, maybe she can write songs, mm-hmm. you know. That opened the door to writing for other pop stars and, and stuff. releasing my own music and, and, your own and thing too. like yeah, yeah. people caring because they were Britney fans and that sort of thing this, this isn't my like super pop era which has evolved a little bit but yes super pop when era. you wrote that song and you worked out with Bonnie and other people maybe was were they working with like lyrically with it or did you have the melody all written out too the melody was written the lyric was written they changed the lyric Bonnie was brought in to change the lyric she actually from uh <laughs> From Lola to Lala? <laughs> <laughs> she, we talked about it after, and she was like, you could have rewritten the lyric. Like, sorry, they had me rewrite it and, like, take take a percentage. But uh, they brought in, I think there were a total of seven writers on that thing. So it was wow. originally three, and Luke brought in more of his people. And then wow. all, all of them were assigned to him so he could get a larger cut from the song if he had his writers come in and oh. make, make alterations. Do you still get uh, resi- royalties from that song? I don't know. I you don't get, know. Okay. I get royalty statements a couple of times a year, and I don't check what mm-hmm. they're from. They're not that big, though. Let's hmm. be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I just yeah, I was wondering if you got seven writers on there. Like, oh, I had that, the smallest. Yeah, me and the original writer had the smallest percentage of anyone who came in and wrote really, even though yeah. it was your song. You, yeah. You, really, the biggest percentage uh, of the writing was probably you two, right? Yeah, us and the original producer, yeah. But that's, this is what happens. This is how the pop music industry works. People get fucked on percentages. Now, what does Dr. Luke do? <laughs> he goes, scalpel. scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> and then a songwriter gives him a scalpel, and he cuts out a line. <laughs> and he's right. like, that will be 70% of the time. Are you please. working with him in the, like, the studio, and he's behind the boards, and he's like, he's like feeling it, and you guys are <laughs> like, yeah, this is it. And he's like fading up. A string thing and you're like yeah this is you guys are all vibing in a smoky studio i assume late at night <laughs> I, <laughs> i've never worked with him in the same room oh. so i don't know all i know is that kesha has a song about him that was very bad so oh. or, sorry the song was very good but about him being bad kind of defam- yeah wow mm-hmm. okay. well yeah he's got Allegations or He's got a allegations. reputation of mm. being a bad doctor. Yeah, yeah <laughs> doctor, bad doctor. Malpractice. <laughs> malpractice. A lot of, mal- yeah, lot of malpractice. malpractice accusations. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, did you, were you aiming to be a Britney Spears of sorts yourself? Uh, I, at that time, I think I was aiming to be more of a 
Gwen Stefani. Uh huh. You know, uh-huh. someone who writes my songs and is a little more, at, well, at least at the time, that the version of Gwen I had in my head was like someone who's a little edgier and more interesting and was a songwriter. Britney's not a songwriter. Who in the pop world right now writes their own songs? Well, Taylor, Taylor? Swift. Yeah. Besides Swift, Katy Perry, um, Charlie XCX. Uh, a lot oh, of girls, okay. a lot of oh, ladies. Okay. Yeah. You keep up on pop music still? Not as much. Uh-huh. Not as much. How, how did this all start? Where did you come from? What about Snap and Crackle? <laughs> <laughs> no, them I keep up with. <laughs> crackle music. You listen to Crackle? <laughs> what kind of music do you like? I like Snap, snap crackle, crackle. Of course. You know. Well, not so much pop anymore, yeah. but <laughs> I listen to Captain Crunch. Uh, I don't know. Um, do you, so well, yeah, where did you come from and how did that start? How did that work? I mean, I, I just was writing songs since I was a, since I was so young and I just like always wanted to be a pop star. I was in like, what city? In, in Michigan. Nuevo, Michigan. Okay. Or Fremont, Michigan. Is that Uper? Are you a Uper? Or is oh, that no, down in the, no, in the mitten uh, part? In the mitten. Yeah. Solid mitten girl. And I just always want to, I don't, it's so, I feel like it's like not that interesting. It's like you work for years and years and years and you work with new people and then new people and the new people and the new people and eventually word spreads and like, then you finally get in with the right people. And you know, it's like, it's such a gradual process, but I started writing songs very young because yeah, I wanted to be like a Spice Girl. You wanted to be a people Spice wanted. Girl. Well, I wanted to be, you know, they were <laughs> the ultimate inspiration. Sure. What was your favorite Spice? Ginger. Uh-huh. She was the star. <laughs> oh, she was. Wasn't That's she? an actual I guess Spice she was, too. Yeah, She's it the is, only yeah. one who's a real spice. <laughs> right. I know, they're all not real spices, are they? Scary, posh, baby, yeah. sporty. Sporty, scary. They should, have it all, they should bring it back like, and have all new spices. Cinnamon. But, I mean, yeah. you could do salty. Mustard seed. You could do turmeric. Sure. <laughs> Salty um, spice. They had cardamom. You know, she's kind cardamom? of like, she has, she's a mom, cardamom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's the she's kind of the mother of the group. She's the leader. It's her, her or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Cardamom. But did, when you were growing up, did you um, were your parents like you got to learn piano or do you have? Did you? How did it all start? Were you you know? In, did you learn an instrument? Uh, yes, but then I stopped learning and I regret it all the time. But I wasn't learning because we were a musical family. I was just learning because we were Mormon and Mormons for some reason a lot of them play piano. It mm. seems. But then we just stopped, and now I have a piano in my home, and I don't really know how to play it. Huh. So sad. Well, that's at least you got the piano. Yeah. In there. You yeah. Know? You could always Did learn. You do choir, I can do like this chord. Tabernacle choir style. Oh, sometimes, but I hated it. I thought mm. I was too. I thought I was cooler than the church. Sometimes religious music is really cool. Not Mormon music. <laughs> really, they're not. Yeah. No, it's, it's very slow and droney uh, well i mean do you consider some certain christmas songs are religious and those are really good songs well that's true i mean I i'm love not thinking christmas, christmas i'm thinking more of like certain religious like there's some cool gospel kind of like songs uh, i have to look up this guy but like certain songs like in chicago you would find these records where like they just made you could just make a record from your like church you would just like make a record mm. and find them in the thrift stores and like sometimes people find them and like this is really cool you know stuff like that are you still mormon no when did that when did you leave the faith <laughs> now can we before we get into that yeah i i saw you on the netflix documentary about cults how to become a cult leader yeah how to become a cult leader yeah and yeah, so you were kind of like one of many talking heads experts in cults. And your your podcast is about cults too. Yeah. And what's that called? It's called Trust Me. Trust Me. Yeah. Cults and manipulation and extreme belief, all of those things. Now is that the Mormon is is the cult that you have experience with is that the LDS? Is that what it's called? That is what it's called. Latter-day LDS. Saints. Latter-day Saints. Yeah. But I don't I I had a separate experience that was from someone who's sort of preying on my family's LDS beliefs and called himself a prophet, um, uh, as opposed to just the mainstream church, which I don't. I my experience was not that of a cult, but I know other people have other experiences. By the way, LDS, not to be confused with the Korean uh, K-pop band, you know, LDS. LDS, <laughs> LDS you know. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> I was I was my mind was going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as you said it, and then I, okay. Um, so okay, so there was somebody who was doing that with your family yeah 
<laughs> doing and you that. escaped. He was doing that. You escaped. Did your parents escape? Why my mom got out and told me it was fake, and then I no longer believed, but it was just me and her. Um, oh. So were yeah. they, they weren't, ju- he wasn't, the guy wasn't just doing Mormon, he was adding, integrating his own ideas into this sect or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and uh-huh. they've changed, they change every like three months, like he has a website and you can follow how the ideology is changing, it's fascinating. Huh. But yeah, at the time it was like, I'm translating this part of the Book of Mormon that this angel sealed up. And I'm the true prophet in the world's ending, and you you got to give me money. Huh. So y- your thing is not even, you don't even think of Mormon or the Mormonism or whatever as a, as a cult. It's more just this specific guy who was using Mormonism to do that. Yeah. It's more of a cult thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, like, we talk about this a lot on the podcast because everyone's experience is different depending on, like, what congregation they're in and who their leader is. Um, but there's definitely culty stuff. Like the, the the prophet of the Mormon Church talks to God directly. They think, and you know, you, you give him a bunch of your money. Hmm. But my family, a lot of my family, is still Mormon, and their experience is totally fine and lovely, and they have nice lives. So, what was some of the crazy stuff that he was saying about? You know, what was the most outlandish thing? Is that my my guy? Yeah, um, <laughs> your guy. My, my dude? guy. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, I think saying you're a prophet is like sure, pretty okay. outlandish to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know his. This was not. This was after we believed in him. Um, but I know he started talking about aliens. That's and, what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but that evolved, and then also he started saying that he was the illumin, the real Illuminati. Um, and then it turned into like a political figure. I think he took responsibility for COVID, which was really b- brave of him to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it was like going to teach everyone a lesson or something. But but at the time, it was just, hey, you know, the church is off track and I'm the real prophet, which is, you know, how Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, got people on board to begin with by saying mm-hmm. these churches are off track. I'm the real prophet. An angel told me. Hmm. Do you see... Um, because cults are something that I only see on movies. I've never really experienced any, I feel like I haven't um, experienced uh, anyone maybe lure, luring me in or. That you know of. That I know. I mean, yeah. I was in Christian youth groups. Okay. I mean, if you want to like zoom out, I guess you could call Christianity or any religion a cult in a way. But there was nobody saying like, I'm directly talking to God. And there was there was no like one dude or whatever that, that was like con- trying to control and manipulate yeah but would yeah. you say that donald trump in a way is, is a cult leader yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely is this a i mean that's not a joke question i mean <laughs> I... to us yeah i mean to me obviously yeah but you can't say that to if you have a family member that no or if there's somebody that like is like half of the country half of the voting population many millions of people voted for him yeah <laughs> or whatever well, i don't think voting but like, for him how, how would somebody how would you talk to somebody who perhaps voted for him how would you explain if, if you wh- say oh that's a cult maga is a cult people are just gonna be offended yeah and like, of course so how would you break it down how would you in, break it down uh, yeah <laughs> and explain why <laughs> or it's would a cult? you even bother uh excellent Maybe that's addendum the to the question i like i think first of all somebody voting for trump is not the same thing as somebody like being in the cult of trump um mm-hmm. because people have many reasons for voting for trump many of which are you know um disillusionment with the current political system and thinking he's whatever he's uh, the identifying with something right. but then you have the people who are like more extreme and more on the q9 side and literally think that trump is saving the world from pedophiles um, and like are subscribing to all of the conspiracy theories that he perpetuates, taking his word as truth, regardless of alternative evidence. Um, and kind of like there are people who really like mold their lives around the things that come out of his mouth. And those are more the people that I'm talking about. And those are the thing is that if you tell someone they're in a cult they're not going to listen to you anyway so it's not like it's not something that you would really engage with in that way it's more like 
wow, why do you feel that way? What do you like about him? Um, what makes you think that? And usually you can identify some like pain within someone that is leading them to like feel so fervently about that thing. I, I wouldn't say like, I don't, I didn't mean to sound uh, dismissive in the beginning, I, but I do think that Trump is a cult-like figure and people have very unhealthy relationships to him. Mm -hmm. Does that summarize it? No, that, yeah, for sure. Um, I think what he was curious is, what would you say to somebody? How would you say? Well, if, if anyone is in any cult, you yeah, kind of said cult. it a little bit there, but like, how would you approach, you would approach them by saying, just ask, not saying you're in a cult, but like kind of asking them. You would say to more come like up to their own conclusion. Yeah, the thing like, is, no one is gonna. I, I mean, I don't want to say no one. It definitely happens, but I would say the vast majority of the time, when you attack someone's belief system directly, they respond defensively because they it feels like an attack on them and their identity yeah. and their the things that make them who they are. So that it just like doesn't really work to do that. Um, what? Cult, many cult experts say is helpful is to um, be curious, not cut them off, not like yell at them. That doesn't do anything, but maybe like help them, help them, um, <laughs> s you know, draw parallels on their own by bringing up stories of other kinds of groups or cults that might have parallels mm -hmm. and similarities. Have you ever um, helped somebody? realize that they're in a cult yeah. or leave a cult have you saved anyone uh, yeah you know i haven't have you ever been the prophet <laughs> i am the prophet the prophet of non-cults you know <laughs> yeah honestly that is that is a scary thing but we could talk about that after but my mom actually um has done a lot of that work she's she lives in this the a town where the flds live um do you know the flds fundamentalist mormons polygamists oh they're polygamists yeah yeah. Where's is that in Michigan too? No, this is in southern Utah, border of Arizona. Okay. Um, but she's she's done quite a bit of like cult uh, work in the cult world, whether that's harm reduction with people currently in cults or helping people to leave. And the way that that has typically worked is by her sharing her story, not attacking anyone, not telling them they're wrong or their profits bad, but just sharing her story of how she was manipulated and the tactics that were used on her, and they, you know kind of put it together for themselves it's happened a, a few times so she kind of says i was in a cult you know i was manipulated um i trusted this person so wh what about you though like she kind of <laughs> just explains her thing and say like do you think that's what do you think is that like you I what do know. you think <laughs> <clears throat> what do you think well i also saw that documentary about that mormon cult and all the women are wearing those like mm -hmm. blue that's dresses or whatever yeah, yeah. That's that's scary. That one was real scary. Luckily, they got the guy. Spoiler alert! But that guy's locked up. He's right? Been in jail for quite some. Not all Mormons are polygamous. Most polygamous. Mormons are not polygamous. Most of them are not. Yeah, okay. mainstream Mormonism abolished the practice of polygamy um, many many years ago, hundred mm -hmm. something years ago. Oh wow! Yeah. Is there any polygamists that? Not that you're an expert on this, but like where like the, there's a woman that has like a bunch of dudes, <laughs> bunch of husbands. There must be definitely not in Mormonism. But there must be somewhere, or maybe those are just poly relationships. Maybe Mormonism. Hey, Let's start that religion. Mormonism. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll be into that. Like me and Brent, and like my friends. You know, we all have this one wife, and it's we kind of share all the. <laughs> we share one wife. Yeah. Sounds exhausting. It's so interesting. No, it's more. It's 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 uh you're it's not exhausting because it's you uh you know what I mean you you're sharing the responsibility. There's with, a I mean imagine how many guys are changing, friends. how many yeah. light bulbs are being changed in that house. That's you know? true. Yeah. Got, <laughs> well, not <laughs> not if they're like my then, boyfriend, you can't change anything. But, but yeah. But then again, she does. She would have to do cooking for ten guys or something. No, I'm just well, kidding. Yeah, I'm <laughs> she'd ha she'd have to do the cleaning for ten different <laughs> oh, bedrooms. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So you also made, um, you also make films. I do. I'm gonna take my sweatshirt off because I'm hot. Okay. Really? Yeah. Keep the camera on, Brent. It's so, because <laughs> it's cold in here. I tell you, boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I dressed perfectly. It's a light long sleeve shirt, right in the middle, 
Anyway, oh, we both are wearing brown. Yeah, this I is the my brown, brown side. side. You guys are I brown side. I brown for Brent. Tales from the Brown Side. He has an album called Tales from the Brown Side. You do? Yeah. Oh, I'm like brown today. This is for you. Wow, I wish I wore my brown sh- stuff. <laughs> I never wore brown, and I went to the. I, I don't wear brown either. I went to the thrift store yesterday, and I scored big time. This I couldn't believe how many yesterday? things I found. Yeah, this is like I found this fits perfect, and it's really nice, and it has it's Lufthansa brand. Lufthansa. Did you the airline? Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. I feel like this was like an airline, <clears throat> like work like somebody that works for Lutansa. Did this you wash like, it? No. Cool. <laughs> but I smelled it, and it smelled perfectly like they just washed it. Okay, good. You didn't wash it. I might have washed it. I've never I worn it. I don't think I did because I did laundry yesterday. I don't think this got in there. I would. I would never trust. A th- I you said know. screw it. It smelled. Hey, but, it smelled perfectly clean. Hey. Does that gross to you? I do the Does smell test sometimes as well. You mean you've worn stuff that you didn't wash? Yeah. From the thrift store? Or like, yeah, a couple times. Really? Wow. Yeah. You guys are adventurous. Would you ever wear shorts unwashed if it smelled fresh? I'm talking shorts. We're talking Daisy Dukes. You, if I go, am I going uh, commando? I was going to say if I have underwear no, on. No, you have underwear on. You, you have underwear. Would you well, still? That's my layer wear? of protection. Okay, it's really. <laughs> shorts? Yeah, shorts. I mean, if they seem, any pant, any if they pant. seem perfectly smell fresh like this, freshly washed. Sure. It what smells am I, fresh, what am I but of? you don't know if it is or not fresh. I would prefer to wash it, yeah. but in a pinch. In a pinch, okay. I would wear, just wear underwear. It was okay. my, um, I was being ecologically friendly by just, by not washing it. Anyway. Yeah. Where were we? You made a movie, a, a horror movie. Yes. A horror short. How many movies have you made? Uh, I've made three short films and a and bunch of videos. And you've acted in movies, too. And yes. What was you were also you were an American Horror Story? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I, I love hearing my resume back to I me. Know. This is great. Well, it's like I'm just saying it for the listener. Yeah. So they know. Yeah, yeah. What was your role in that? Oh, I was a girl who showed up to the hotel to try to have sex with a ghost. So were you the were you the scary one in the show? Or was the ghost a scary one? The ghost was a scary one, but I found it to be hot. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's not even scary. It's just sort of <laughs> no. like a ghost porno. <laughs> yeah, although, but they cut the scene where, the, where I actually like conjure up the ghost and then we have sex. So they you don't even that? get to see it. Yeah. Was, was the ghost. Time. Um, were you like going like. <laughs> <laughs> or was there an actor? Like, you know what I mean? There was, was an the ghost, actor. <laughs> there was the ghost like transparent? That'd be funny if it was an <laughs> invisible ghost. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. That'd be fun. Imagine a horror movie where you don't see it and it the, the it, they don't move any furniture or move any objects. So it's purely just... I guess the twist could be it could be all in the person's head too, you know? <laughs> that yeah. They're just imagining that you don't see, ever see it. It's a ghost story. No, there are movies, movies like, that. like that. Yeah. Really? Well, that one we saw. Um, no, but well, no, there was weird stuff which in that. One? What hereditary. was that? That one. Yeah, hereditary. No, it's there's almost like that's there's a lot of stuff you see in there. Her imagination. Yeah. Wait, what? there's no. a woman crawling up the walls. Yeah, crawling up walls. You know. And yeah, but is it setting is on it, fire? But the question is, is it the ma- the imagination? No. Of the... No, she's a member. Not to spoil it. Yeah. Spoiler alert! But she's a member of the satanic cults. Is you know. Yeah. Okay, whatever. I actually thought that was disappointing. I wanted it to be not that. Mm. Agreed. <laughs> the way it, the ending was disappointing. Just here to. I just I thought in my memory of that movie, it's more of like a lot of it is her um, her um, own psychosis is conjuring up these things. You know, I, maybe it was at one point in there, but I I what I was left with and remember was that it was all real stuff and even if it is in her imagination though we're still seeing that stuff happen i'm th- i'm saying a horror movie where you don't even see anything weird except for the one person acting and responding to things you know what i, I mean? feel like there's a movie called the others that might be like that uh-huh nicole so the Have viewers one? it's been a long time which who is it the nicole, nicole kidman, kidman. Oh, nicole I, kidman. I remember that movie because i don't watch a lot of horror movies but that one was really scary because it's all about what you don't see uh huh. Well, you know, get this. You, do you know about um, the Cecil Hotel? Yeah. You know about that whole yeah. weird mystery yeah. about the woman? And she's doing yeah. this. With That's her kind arms. of that comes to mind right now, right? Where mm. there's this woman, if you're not familiar, who I saw the documentary and I know all about it. Okay, so she's in, there's footage, there's security footage of her 
you know, in an elevator and in the hallway, kind of doing weird movements and seemingly seeing things and responding to them. You know, we don't see anything besides her that's that's out of the ordinary. And so that's really creepy. Just seeing her, imagining what she might be thinking or seeing or whatever. You yeah. Know? That's... that's Turns out it was just mental illness, but yeah. it, 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 you know what? Is... I thought that from day one, and then I'm watching this whole documentary, and I'm like, yeah. So that's what they concluded. Well, that's yeah. what a lot of ghost stories are: is mental illness. Well, not necessarily mental Unless illness, you... or... but maybe just you know an anomaly in the brain or mm -hmm. deep or... grief, sleep deep, paralysis. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say it's illness. Oh, but it's some kind of mental, yeah, it's a me mental something, me something. Yeah, yeah, mental process. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's what. Um, but by the way, but they found her body in that tank, right? The water tank. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I put it. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't. <laughs> and they didn't. Turns out I did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I was thinking about that hotel last night because I did a comedy show at a hotel, and I was almost gonna like joke about. I was like downtown, you know. I'm like, what's what's this hotel downtown? Anyway, finish. But they they said that it was how. The, the big mystery was how did she get into the tank because you can't do it by yourself or she can't you can't lock it the way she had it I locked. I think you can. That was okay. but that was fake. I mean, that was internet... she climbed in and she just put the lid back on. Is that what it was? Okay. Like that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um <laughs> See, Aaron, man, he they knows initially it all. they initially thought the lid was back on, but it but a guy who worked at the hotel was like uh no, I accidentally I came up, went up there, covered it, didn't look inside. Yeah, he was like, oh, oh the lid's off. I better put the lid right back on. Oh, so the guy, yeah. the guy who worked there put it on. Okay, yeah. and that's why they thought, okay, got it. I had a guy on my podcast who was blamed for the murder of that woman. Really? Wait, um, was he the, was he the, the musician? The metal guy? The metal, yeah. the heavy metal. You had that guy on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that, he, that guy got it rough. He did, and he was there for a no year reason. before she yeah. was even there. But the internet will just like cherry pick things right. and go off. Wow. Go off, Queen. So what happened to him? He he now is like an outspoken person talking about some of the harms of true crime internet mm. and like web sleuths and stuff. And he's still making music. Pablo. Pablo, what's... That's morbid, cool. morbid. That's wasn't what he, wasn't he from like Mexico City? Wasn't he visiting LA too? Yeah. Where does he live now? He's I don't like, remember. You know, he lives in the Cecil He hotel. was in another country, <laughs> but I want to say he was in Europe when I spoke to him, so I don't, I don't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, it was like a remote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever gotten paranormal? <laughs> <laughs> Have I gotten paranormal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I want to get paranormal. But I want really. to get paranormal so bad. I have never had anything that I could really say... I've tried. Have you ever had, you ever seen a ghost or any like weird we had, unexplained thing happen? We had spooky stuff in our house in Michigan, which was like really old, but I'm, I'm like a pretty hardcore skeptic. So in retrospect, I'm like, I feel like there were probably explanations you for those like things. You could explain it all the way. Yeah. Although Nothing there was you, one that was spooky and I, don't, okay. I still don't know what it, the explanation was. What happened? You want to hear it? We're going to break it down. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Now. We'll solve it. Let's figure out what happened. Yeah. We'll solve it. All right. My mom's out on a date. I'm home with my two brothers. Um, we live in rural Michigan, so we live at the top of like a really long driveway. Neighbors are all really far away. It's like farmland. Um, from the street, you can see the house. And so if it's nighttime and the house is lit up, there's like it's like obvious. You can't really miss it. Um, my mom was out on a date. I was my brothers went to bed. I was downstairs by myself and I was so proud to be downstairs by myself because I was like, I'm normally scared when I'm downstairs by myself and I'm not. And then I got oh, a big spooky feeling and I was like, oh no, now I'm suddenly scared. Ran upstairs, went to bed, had trouble going to sleep. Um, so I was up in bed for a long time. In my child brain, uh, let's say it was 45 minutes. I was like scared in bed, just like there. Your own room? My own room, upstairs. Finally, my mom gets home from her date. She comes upstairs. She, my brothers have been asleep in their bedroom across from mine the whole time. She comes upstairs, comes into my room, and she's like, very funny. My real name is Candace. She called it very funny, Candace. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, we saw you. And I was like, I was, I've been in my bed for a long time. What do you mean? And she was like, you weren't just walking downstairs in the living room? I was like, no, I've been up here for a long time. And then her boyfriend, Eddie, got his gun and started, like, 
Whoa. Looking around the house because both of them saw a figure walking through the living room in two, like two different windows, like walking across. Um, and they came home. The door was still locked. And Eddie took his gun and looked around and there was nobody in the house. Explain. Mm. We probably just I'll had explain. an intruder, right? I know exactly what happened. It was the cold. You were guy. in a state of mind of fear, right? Yeah. What you th you thought you were in your bedroom um, for a really long time. For a long time, but in reality, you were creeping around like some kind of ghost. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but then in your recollection of it, you're like you were so scared that time and space was warped in your mind. And it made it made it seem in your mind that you were there for a long time. Here's the other part. But again, this might be just memory, <laughs> memory things. But my mom and Eddie both saw distinctly like a man, like a larger figure. I was like probably eight when this happened. In your fear, what? in your state of fear, you put on men's clothing <laughs> to scare away. No, I'm just. To, I yeah, don't to, doubt, I don't doubt your story. I'm just to beef yourself up. Beef yourself up to yeah, to, yeah. Yourself, to cope to with make yourself yeah, seem to deal with fear. To, I'm like standing really yeah. tall. Deflect the th fear, you know, or something. Yeah. I want to say he had. They said he had a hat on, but I'm probably just adding that detail now. Ooh, well, there's the Hat Man. That's a. I listen to some paranormal paranormal podcasts. Oh yeah. Yeah, my friend Jack, who's been has he been on this show yet? Jack Wagner. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Jack Wagner has a new podcast called other world where he talks you know people just tell their paranormal story but there's one thing called the hat man that people have seen all around it's like a common like mm. figure of spooky. spooky paranormal figure and it's like a man in a hat like what kind of hat baseball I think, cap i think it's kind of like imagine like a guy from like a film noir in the you know, like a 40s film noir, like, like maybe some kind of like fedora, fedora kind of thing. <laughs> Boulder. It's really yeah. just a, it's just really a, a, a you know, a, a slam poet, you know, just <laughs> trying to just do street poetry anywhere he can, you know? Uh, yeah, that's and, funny as I totally explained. Yeah, <laughs> he's just desperate for stage time, you know, and he's, you know. We should do that. We should solve all these paranormal things. That oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron, has any paranormal thing happened to you? No. Damn it. Sorry. Nothing to you. No. I'm trying to think. I mean, no. No. I mean, I don't. I, well, I had this weird dream once, but that <laughs> might not have been a dream. What? I mean, I think I <laughs> might have said this. I'll do it real quick. I went to, I was probably 13 or so. I went to bed and, um, you know, everything was... I went to bed and I had this dream, okay? Mm -hmm. I dreamt that I got out of bed and that I went into this room or this sort of small little adjunct room to where I was sleeping and there was a woman in there who had short kind of, sh well, hair of your length maybe and um, wearing a brown kind of top and a <laughs> jeans. Shut I'm, up. Just, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. She had, um, I think, red hair and... Um, <laughs> Or kind of whatever. It doesn't matter what her hair color was, but <laughs> she was looked like a real <laughs> she looked like a real estate woman. Is what it was, okay? And um, she looked totally normal and everything, except her eyes were just the whites of the eyeball. Nothing. There was no iris or pupil, okay? Uh -huh. And um, I also sensed some kind of evil energy about her. And she said she gave me this message uh, on a piece of paper, and it, it said, I, do, I remember looking at it, and it was partially in the dark, but it said something about midnight. I remember the word midnight was on in the message. And she said, you know, give this message to your mom or something like that. And so I took this message, and I went, I just remember it was very vivid walking up the stairs to my where my mom was sleeping, my parents were sleeping. And I went in, and I was trying to wake my mom up and tell her, oh, this, there's this woman downstairs, and um, here's the message. And my, everything just seemed very realistic. And my mom was asleep, and she was um, saying, and she kind of was half, I kind of woke her up a little bit, but she said to just go back to sleep or whatever, something like that. And then I remember, and then I went downstairs, and I went to the, the bathroom, and there was... Um, this floating head in the bathroom um, and it was a man's f head and uh, he was bald and kind of wrinkled in his face sort of and his eyes were just it just was red where his eyes would be and it was a floating head and it was in the dark and then I flipped the light switch on and the head disappeared 
Um, and um, I'm probably leaving some details out, but whatever the case is, I woke up. And here's the scary part, is that the light in the bathroom was on, and it shouldn't have been on. You know, the, the light should have been off. And it made me wonder, did I sleepwalk that whole thing? And, and I don't have any history of sleepwalking, but it made me think, was I in the dark walking around in the house, just sort of, you know, interacting with, the, you know, doing the whole Cecil, the, the Cecil Hotel thing or what, you know? And that's, that, so that's kind of creepy to me that, you know, did I do that? Did I actually flip the what switch What color on? was that light in the bathroom? W- what do you mean? Was it just white? Yeah. It wasn't blue? <laughs> so I'm thinking you got red eyes, white eyes. What do you got? Blue? Was this an American dream? It was in July. <laughs> was this the American it dream? Was a, it was a hot night in July. <laughs> yeah, the American dream. American Horror Story. Yeah, it was American Horror Story. spin off. American <laughs> Dream. American Nightmare. It's just, hey. like, it's just like scary nightmares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, well, the, the scary thing about it was, was that real? But no, I don't believe in ghosts at all, and I don't think anything paranormal happened. I think it was just a weird dream. I don't know how that light switch came on. That's really weird, but explain it. Was it an ensuite, like your own private bathroom? Or was I mean, it's it like a bathroom. down the hallway. So maybe it's some not, other it wasn't brother down the ha- or sister turned da- it It wasn't down the hallway, but it, was, it is a shared. It was, a, it was, it was shared with, um, try, uh, yeah, it was shared with a few other people. Yeah. Well, then they did. And they honestly, it could have been on. my dad. My dad uses that bathroom, okay. too, so it could have been him. But <laughs> I doubt that, though. The, the light should have been off. It's weird. But it could have been. It could have been that. It could have been dad. It could have been dad. could have been. <laughs> dad might have been real distracted that night. And then the light was on, and it gave you weird dreams because you're not used to light being on, be. and it's impacting your vision. Let's say it was all See, that. See, this yeah. makes more sense. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's go with that. Let's go with that, you know? Um, but uh, I'm with you, though. I want to experience something I want. paranormal. But what's weird is that in my dream, all this stuff was dark, and then I flipped the light switch on, and the head disappeared and stuff. It just So know. when you flip the light switch on in your dream is when your dad came in and flipped the light switch on. Oh, 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 oh right, right, right. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he's like, oh, no, I will go Brent, and he, like, he hid in there. <laughs> then he was hiding in the closet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he hid in the closet the whole rest of the time like this. <laughs> He's doing that to himself. <laughs> he's like this. <laughs> you know, he's like doing this to himself to stop himself from sneezing. I almost had kind of an experience recently. I don't, I don't know if I told this on the show, but I was visiting my friends. You know, my friend Molly that lives in Utah? Yeah. She lives with her mom, and I was staying when I was visiting at their house. They have a big house, two-story house, and my friend came with me. And um, Molly, you know, is my friend, and my my friend who came with, he just met her. Anyway, they played a. We were gonna see what room we were gonna stay in, right? Upstairs, there's like Molly's childhood room with this tiny pink little bed. We probably talked. We yeah. talked about this. Yeah, yeah. And we hold. We had a huge bit out of it. Yeah. Anyway, great bit. One of the. They classic were like, you gotta stay this. on the. You gotta stay in the cute little bed, and then. Um, <laughs> I was like, no, I get to pick, and then, but I, then, I, then I went into the room, the nice, like adult room, big, huge bed, adult sized bed, and I got a bad vibe in there, and I was like, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stay in that little bed. I went in the little bed, and my friend stayed in the big bed, and in the morning, I was like, how'd you sleep? And he was like, I didn't sleep too well. I. I couldn't sleep well, and I feel like there was like a figure nearby in the closet, like watching over me. Or it something. was Brent's dad. <laughs> Brent's, Brent Weinbach's dad was in the closet. And then her mom goes, "Oh, well, that's where my son. That's where that's my son's room. He, he's died. You know, like I don't think he died in that room. You didn't but, like, know this going like, into it. I was like, what? Yeah, I didn't know. I was Whoa. like, these are the empty rooms in the Spooky. house. It was like that's where, that's my dead son's room. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my like, goodness. He like, felt like there was someone in the closet. Something like that. That's creepy. And but you, the feng shui in that room was off. I was like, I got to get out of here. I'm not saying it was a ghost. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look. It ghosts, was also like real brown and dark, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like bad vibes. Brown, yeah, walls, brown, dark. Smell, gross. You know? I wish I wore my brown stuff today. We could have been. Well, why don't we take a break thing. and you run back? Your pants are kind of brown. Nah, this is khaki, but um, I, khaki is brown. 
It's a it's light, light brown. It's is that is bay? It really? No. Tan, it's in the brown. Tan is a form of brown. It's in the brown scale. It's in the scale of brown. I don't brown know. scale. It's not good enough. <laughs> not good enough for what I wanted to happen today. After so how did TV. you get the role in American Horror Story? Did you? I. Do you go on auditions all the time? Uh, I saw uh, you at an audition once. What audition? It was some commercial. Oh. We were. I think we were auditioning for different things, but it was not. It's weird if you were auditioning for the same role. Del Taco, Taco Bell. I mean, it was this different spots. Though. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Yeah, Del Taco. Uh, it was at that 200 La Brea South place. South Brea, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but carry on. Uh, I, I don't actually audition that much anymore, to be honest. I'm more in the on the filmmaking side of things these days, but I just auditioned. I just for auditioned what? for American Horror Story. I, I mean, say, sorry, I'm saying that's how I got that. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I see. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm trying to make the movies, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're trying to do the casting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I want to cast myself as well sometimes. Sure. As well. What's the easiest way to want, get the role? What kind of movies do you want to make? What's your ultimate goal right now? I want to make a psychological thriller feature. I What's have... the ultimate psychological thriller? Oh, good question. Um, I mean, I love... I The movies that I'm jealous of mm -hmm. are Black Swan. Um, Sadly, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? I saw Brown Swan. <laughs> 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 I have not seen it. Um, uh, oh man, I have a whole letter. Aronofsky. List. I saw. I, bl I saw Aronofsky. Black Duck. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Black Duckling. That was a good one. That's yeah. like the prequel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, yeah, like psychological thriller. I like psychological thriller, scary movies. Yeah. Those I are the best kind of. Um, horror, I feel like. It's I like agree. the psychological ones. I agree. I don't really care about slashers. Like, they're fine. They're fun. Ghost movies or whatever. They're fine. They're fun. But mm. I won't, like when the shit's happening in the person's brain and you don't know what's real and what yeah. isn't, that's the shit I like. For and, sure. and making and hope to continue to make. Did you see um, it's an early Brian De Palma movie? I'll have to look it up. But I saw it kind of recently. It's a psychological thriller, it's really good. <sighs> Maybe Aaron could look it up. I don't want to. It <laughs> it's called like Sisters or something like that. Mm, probably not. I feel anyway, like okay. I'm besides <laughs> Black Swan, can you name six more? <laughs> Would you uh, pull up my letterbox list? I feel the pressure to think of the movies. No, but The Master. I love The Master. Oh, we should look you up on Letterbox. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love Letterbox. So do you think of the master as a psychological thriller? No, I would say, oh. I mean, I guess that's more of a drama. But the thing is, I like right now, I'm sort of known for horror and I'm in the horror world and realm. And I definitely want to make a feature that is in that zone, but I don't want to stay there. Would you like to be a scream queen? <laughs> <laughs> I already am a scream uh -huh, queen, uh -huh, Brent. Uh -huh. No, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm on this website where it's like, you're, it's like you have your list of your, the worst movies. Litterbox. Litterbox? <laughs> I forget it. Sisters. <laughs> what was that? Sisters. Oh, I didn't know that. I recommend you... Sisters. Huh. I think hmm. it was on um, it was on a Criterion Collection or something. I'm oh, jeez. I'm opening my Letterbox because I wanna I wanna answer add it to all your, of the questions. You gotta add you it to your well. queue. Add it to your queue now. Um, here's my list of films I wish I'd made. Black Swan, Saint Maud. Have you guys seen that? Mm -mm. Saint Maud. Yeah. No. It's really good. Ex Machina. Oh, I saw that. Heavenly That's good. Creatures. I'm going to write oh, down. Heavenly Creatures, uh, yeah, with Kate Winslet. That's a Peter creatures. Jackson movie. Heaven. I'm going to yeah. write this down because yeah. I need movie ideas to watch. What was um, the second one? Maud? Saint Maud. Saint Maud. Okay. You Were Never Really Here. Did you guys see that with Joaquin Phoenix? I didn't see that. So good. I heard that was good too. <laughs> so good. Look, there, there's, all, there's all of them right there. Let's just there. take a picture of it. Um, oh, you got Whiplash on there. That's Brent's favorite. I w that was my favorite movie of whatever Handmaiden. year that came out. The Handmaiden. Suspiria. The remake. The Wrestler. Good. I've seen it. Black Swan. I just rewatched The Wrestler the other night. Swallow. Still so good. What's this one? Oh, is that The Master? That's the Master. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of some good psychological thrillers to you. recommend. <laughs> Can't think of any right now. That's okay. I'd have to, you know, I could look at my list because I, I don't delete the ones I've seen. You, you keep a list on your phone and not letterboxed? 
I, I don't know why I'm not on Letterboxd. Get on Letterboxd. Uh, you know, I you're thought right. About, I should just go there. I thought about trying to do get on that site to uh, kind of try to database my every th- movie I've seen. But I started doing that, and I thought, I can't. I'm not doing this. This is going to take too long, you know? I mean, you can do it gradually. It's so, I mean, I love making lists, so I find it very satisfying. My short is apparently on there, and I'm too scared to look to see if anyone rated it. Because uh, I didn't put it on there, which means someone who saw it must have put it on there. Uh, That's very scary. And it might be positive or negative. Could be. Well, it's a very political film, so really? it could go either way, yeah. Political? How so? It's about a political commentator who discovers that her rhetoric has inspired a mass shooting. Um, and it's, you know, psychological thriller, body horror, but uh-huh. it's, it's you know, it's quite political. Uh-huh. Polarizing. I might have be. deleted the ones I've seen, but I, It Follows was a pretty good. I love It Follows. I think there was, there was another one that was like the same movie. Did you see the other Smile? one? Smile? Smile. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Smile's like that. I didn't see Smile, but I saw It Follows. I'm trying to remember which one was better. You know what I liked, by the way? And this is kind of, ins- I would say, s- well, it's more of a n- kind of noir. I mean, it's a noir film, I suppose, but there's something kind of psychological about it is the movie that that guy made um, called Under the Silver Lake. Excellent transition, Brent. So, I happen to be in that film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you're at that party? I'm the, one of the, the brides. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't I seen it. a photo of, of the band. The what? He jacks off to a photo that I'm in in the movie. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. That's so. Right. I should watch that movie. I I liked it, po- it. It popped up on my um like watch this next. You know like when you. I liked it. I tell you that I liked it because um, well first of all a lot of work was put into that movie. There's a lot of. Did you get into that movie at all? Did I mean, you you saw it right? I saw it, but I was distracted by waiting for when my part my scene <laughs> were gonna. Oh go really? Off. So it, well, there yeah. was there was a um. There's an uh, another element to it that besides this movie, the story. There's all these clues in this in the whole movie oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. can lead you to something, and you can figure out for yourself. It's really neat. So I watched the movie, and then I watched it again, pausing every frame, and and I mean not every frame, but every every shot I was pausing and looking for clues and stuff. And, really, is that and, why people have such? There's uh, there's like a faction of people who have like a really like. They're kind of obsessed it's like, with it's the kind movie. of like yeah. a cult movie. Yeah, it's a cult classic. Well, I don't know if it's a cult classic, but it is. It's. It, I spent a lot of time figuring stuff out, and there's a lot of decoding to do Ooh. and stuff. And it's really neat. And there's a lot of just a lot. The every shot has something in it, and there's a whole. And people have been trying to figure out, and it's. It seems to be unsolvable. And I. Um. But I actually did it on my own, and then once I was as far as I could go. Uh, I then I started looking, you know, at uh, people, other people were they were talking about, and it was just me and my friend for for a while working on it, and then <laughs> working on it. Well, we were, you know, and no, but it's really neat. It's really neat, and okay. it doesn't. It that was to me that that aspect of it was what made elevated that movie for me and made me really appreciate. It. But also, even aside from that stuff, it's a cool movie anyway. Hmm. You see that director's? Uh, it's got this more underground one. Under the Echo Park, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's under the, 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 the yeah, the and then it goes rock. under under the Highland Park, right under the Highland, Highland. Park. <laughs> I would my my theory is that the hipper neighborhoods they just keep going e- further east, and so eventually you know the hip area where artists are going to live and stuff is going to be Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> <It's> gonna, yeah, <laughs> you know it's going to be uh, it's going to be Rosemead and like something two, like that. Like yeah, years. <laughs> Rose, I'm impressed Rosemead. that you know where Rancho Cucamonga is. Oh, I mean it's a classic. It's, That's it's a, a classic, classic spot. Inland Empire. What do you got? The 210 out there. Claremont College. Oh yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, they got the you know, KSPC. You know, sure. 88.7. You know it. I used to have friends who went to Claremont. Really? I vaguely remember. Things. Interesting, interesting, yeah. I feel like I've been there. I went there once. <laughs> I mean, look, Inland Empire, I mean, look, with a name like Rancho Cucamonga, how could you not how know How could it? you not? Rancho Cucamonga. Rancho Cucamonga. That's a, you know, some cities in, in California have really cool names like Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, hi. <laughs> 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 then you got these ones... Uh, Studio City, <laughs> which is okay. That's right. okay. How about industry? No, no, then there's City, city of, of industry. industry. It just gets, there's some bad commerce. ones. Commerce. Yeah, <laughs> commerce. There's some bad ones down there. 
in that down like the five Isn't in that Zizix like in California. What is that? Zizix? Yeah, that one. No, I, it cool. is in California. Z, yeah, Z Y Z Z X or yeah. Something. Yeah, X. yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah the, Zizix. That's, that's cool. a cool ass name. That, that is cool an interesting name. name. Uh, yeah, Zizix. There's one called uh, Browse that I passed. Browse. Like, I made a, a joke of browsing? it where I was like, I had someone take a photo of me like looking on the internet, and then the sign of Browse is there. Like I'm browsing. <laughs> 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 There's so, um. Also, some funny street names. Well, there's one in there, Utah but... called Cir- What's it called? P- Pride and Circumstance, or it's named after a game show. What? Pop and Cir- No, it's New Mexico. Yeah, what's it called? Truth or Consequences. Truth Ooh. or Consequence. Ooh. <laughs> consequence. Consequence or Consequences. Truth or Consequence. Uh-huh. I believe. Yeah. Okay. It's singular it's... Consequence. What what happens when you go to Truth or Consequence? Have you been? What does it mean even? Truth I or Consequence? I feel like that was a name of a game show and somehow a town won naming their town after it mm. or something like that. Aaron's going to have to pull that up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's Truth or Consequences. So it consequences. Is plural. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, it is Consequences. Truth or Consequences. Do you think about that. Uh, it renamed itself after the... In March of 1950, after the Truth or Consequences radio show. Mm. Oh. Okay. Why? I don't know. <laughs> okay. They just really liked the show. They, that works, you know? They should, imagine if it was just 50 year, 30 years later, you know? There could have been a town called Rainbow Bright. It was before that. It was just called Hot Springs. So. <laughs> Hot Springs. Boring. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> there could have been a... There could have been a town called Transformers. When you moved to L.A., what neighborhood did you move to first? Glendale. Nice. <laughs> I lived in Glendale. How do you like I it? I like Glendale. Yeah. It's so much nicer what now. Area? Oh, I was basically like where the Americana is now, but the Americana didn't What was exist. the street number, address? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I lived on Myrtle. Le- Myrtle. I, oh, oh, really? I lived on Lexington. Okay. That kind of cuts almost there. Yeah. Anyway, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> Streets. So the Americana Street wasn't names. there yet? <laughs> no. No, oh, I really? was there before the Americana was really? there, too. Yeah. When did the I America, mo- uh, America, con- uh, America Americana, Americana come out? Bit. I was going to say, when did the Americana out? They started <laughs> at, that's, out. They started <laughs> making that out around, like, the time I was leaving. Around, I feel like 2009 or something, right? Something like that. that yeah. You were there before the Americana? Yeah. That's when they were dropped. That was so all about the gallery. In the 2000s? I moved out when I was 17, and I'm currently 35. Okay, so, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. That's so long. Wow. Did you come out of here by yourself at age 17? Mm-hmm. Did you graduate high school? Mm-hmm. But I graduated from homeschool. <laughs> huh. Who was teaching you? That guy walking around the house and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was your homeschool teacher. You know? Hey, that's a good Man psychological thriller hat. idea. It's like homeschool <laughs> ghouls or something. Homes, <laughs> homeschool homes ghouls. ghouls. Home, home ghouls. ghouls. Yeah, yeah home, you're home homeschooled, ghoul. but home then there's ghoul. like these ghosts that are like kind of haunting your homeschooling experience. And you're like, Mom, trust me. And she's like, your imagination is edgy. Again, you do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ghosts come. I don't know. I've kind of gone, I'm there, going back now there. to we didn't really solve. We were trying to figure out that maybe. Are you sure your brothers weren't walking around outside that night um, with Eddie and? Uh, I Mom? didn't hear them open or close their door. I, know, I have right a perfect across. explanation for this. Yes. Some creep found out you, that you were home alone. He's about to murder you. He's walking through. Where's my murder victim? And then you knew that was something about. You could tell something was off. That's why you hit. Meanwhile, there's a murderer, and he like sees your parents are coming up. He's, Damn it! Foiled again. So then he he quickly slipped out, locked the door behind him. They don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know nothing. But actually, come to think of it, that is the logical explanation: is there was a man out there. Yeah, it just. I mean, it was not a ghost. It was a man. It was a real man. We just don't know where he was because the doors were locked. And the windows were closed. Oh, the they saw they saw him empty. inside the house. Inside the house. Right, right, right. They saw him in the window mm-hmm. inside the house. But maybe he was not inside the house. Maybe he was outside the house walking, and that's why they didn't find him inside. That. Oh, right, because they're a, seeing like silhouettes going across. Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. That's a viable explanation right that there. That could be it. That could be it. So that's, but that's scary. Because these the bears way. are walking up right now. You see this video? <laughs> could have been a bear. 
Could have been Cocaine Bear. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is, I mean, well, not funny, but the thought that it's a was a man is so much scarier. So much scarier. Because ghosts aren't real, you know? <laughs> that a man exists. And the fact that some man was probably walking around is really scary. You can't really prove scary. that they're not real. You can't prove it. In my in my world view, they don't <laughs> exist. And also I think in, in yours mine. too. I yeah. Think, yeah. In our shared in our shared thought, they don't exist. But you? is it You want to get in on this or <laughs> Well, I ghosts is a tough one to believe in because um, people could see things and they, I know people who have experienced after someone has died, they'll experience like their presence or they'll kind of see, you know, a silhouette of that person or there's, you know, something like that. I don't know. Um, uh, I, I'm just saying no, but. Okay, good. We're all I, on the same page here. It's, it's also like. I'm not necessarily a full atheist just because I don't know. I'm not going to say I know you don't one. Know. I'm more agnostic yeah, on yeah, ghosts yeah. as I am agnostic Ag- on Look, I choose a truth until I'm proven otherwise in my mind. Well, I don't choose a truth. <laughs> truth I, or consequences. I, I, I'm more of like, I'm more Buddhist about it. I don't know. You're waiting until for I evidence. Know. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is I choose If you got the evidence truth. that it exists, yeah, you don't. But, but you, you, you have, have exe- yeah. evidence that it doesn't exist? Hardcore? No. There's a hardcore no when people have seen things. But you do have there to make some decisions. Been, There's some things we don't know People yet. have tried to test some paranormal things, though, scientifically, mm-hmm. and pretty much always it's a, it's a not. Never. But, Amazing Randy. <laughs> well, no, there's been... Hasn't there been certain... Thing I don't want to amazing can of worms but, right amazing now. No, but no, I'm not talking about like telekinesis or something. I'm talking about remote viewing. I feel like there's been some studies. On you know that. about me and remote viewing, right? All you of did it. it. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I took. I a do course. it every night on my TV. <laughs> 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 I, uh, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I took a what? when I was, I think I was 18. I took a a whole lo- full day workshop on remote viewing it was taught by a kung fu master and um i did some and i practiced it through college and saw some really interesting results but i still don't really believe it even though i saw some interesting coincidences well the imagination is very vivid when we're in the right state as far as i understand pretty much every legitimate study that has been conducted to study the paranormal has come up nil but absolutely but i'm not but like that also could be a product of look amazing randy who well, it is and it could also be a natural phenomenon that we just sometimes don't it's not magical from you know what i mean from magical powers yeah i'm not yeah. talking about remote viewing or anything i'm saying sometimes there could be something that that's not predictable right. and therefore it's hard to replicate. Yeah. Yeah. I think purely I think the whole concept of ghosts comes from wind. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wind. People say, Oh, that's just the wind. It is just the wind. It always it's always been the wind. You know, ooh, <laughs> that's wind. You know, it's things moving uh, by themselves. Sleep sleep paralysis. Paralysis. Figures. When I hear these ghost sleep stories, they're seeing yeah. figures. They're not hearing stuff. Sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis, I think, explains. Well, yeah, that's a big like, one too. Yeah. Maybe the lion's share of experiences. Sure, yeah. Also, auditory hallucinations are actually in, like way more common than we think. Like we think they are only really rare in people with schizophrenia, but they can happen to way more people. Yeah. Um, do you think it's actually scarier if it's a real man as a non-believer in ghosts? Because if it was a ghost, isn't that scarier? Because then that disrupts your entire worldview. And then you have to suddenly believe in the paranormal. Hold on. This is interesting. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you saying, Harry? Back to the man. Yeah. The man in the hat. Yeah. <laughs> if he's not a man. Yeah. Maybe that's actually scarier because then that disrupts our worldview of not believing in ghosts. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, uh, or you yeah don't but I just, scary... but the worldview is, I can't, right now, I'm not, pro- it's not been proven to me yeah. that that would, could even possibly be a ghost. Right. Once it can, once that is possible, 
Well, that introduces some scary thoughts if things get proven. But without that, it's just a man. And that's still scary. And it's scarier to me than a ghost because the ghost doesn't seem real to me. That's true. Yeah. We also did have a man actually break into our house at one point in that oh. house. And that was fucking scary. Oh, oh I, <laughs> so it, scary. it was a man. It was definitely a man <laughs> well, out there. Well, that man was in jail by that point, I'm pretty sure. So it wasn't well, it been, But the fact that a man had done that before, another man could have come. Oh, man, wait. why are all these men? I know. Or, wait, wait, when a guy, when the guy broke into your house, yeah. he got caught for that crime? Yeah. Well, oh, he because he attacked my mom. <gasps> it's a sad story. Oh, no. Yeah, but he went well, to jail. How, did you take him down yourself? I, I tried. I was did like you? five. No, no. I was like five or six, and I was like, oh, what do I do? Uh, what do I do? And I couldn't do anything because I was, oh, you know, God. a bit, little baby. Jesus Christ. But he went to jail for it. But it would be very How weird if just caught? another man came to the house. Well, the fact that that's that's possible, even you know what I mean. Well, it's in the kind of the middle of nowhere, the house. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So some random man can just wander there. Well, he had met my mom, and I think sort oh. of got it became a stalkery type of situation. Oh. Um, Did your mom go on a lot of dates with people? Because there's Eddie. <laughs> there was this guy, and then There's maybe the that other guy, the other guy, guy wandering around. Oh, there. maybe that's what it was. It was like that was her secret lover, and she's like, I don't know, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> that could be another theory, <laughs> you know. Oh, but she my said, mom would have told me. Oh, I know that, all my mom's secrets. Oh, okay. oh you do. Yeah, oh, do. are you really close to your mom? I'm really close to my mom. Really? And you, does she know all your secrets? Yeah, yeah. Really? Does yeah. she got any good secrets now that you can <laughs> tell us on? Uh, well, they wouldn't be secrets. The unzip, <laughs> the unzip side. Oh, the How unzip. long have we been going, by the way, Aaron? Uh, we were just past an hour and five. Oh, okay. Oh, Let's wrap it up. Okay. We're going mean, to wrap it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, well, do you mind staying around for a little bit longer? Just sure. We do kind of like a bonus section. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, and okay. we could talk about the time. Maybe we can get into some secrets. Secrets. We could get into a secret that we matched on a dating site once. Ooh. Oh. We'll talk about that in the unzipped section of Poundcast. <laughs> so if you want to keep listening for the juicy stuff, we're going to be talking. <laughs> we're going to be digging into dark secrets. <clears throat> And ghosts and the hat man. Go to <laughs> patreon.com slash poundcast. Sign up today or be a ghost. And just later. haunt and haunt the Patreon. Do haunt you, us later. Is, oh, yeah. What, what would we like? What, name everything that you want <laughs> people to list, check out. <laughs> name everything. Name everything. <laughs> name that people, everything. Uh, LolaBlanc.com. My Instagram is Ula Lola. And that's where my, my music and film and podcast stuff can all be there. My podcast is called Trust Me. Cool. Okay, and what's the one uh, short film that you would like people to see first? Uh, yeah, what's the new one, and is it available? The new one is still doing festivals, so it's not online yet, but it probably will be in the fall or winter. It's called Pruning, and it stars Madeline Brewer from Handmaid's Tale. Hmm. Okay, cool. cool. Thank you, Lola Blanc, for being here. And also, one last... We, we'll mention... Nah, I'll say it. I'll say it. We'll say it in the beginning of the well, show. Well, we'll say thank you to Aaron for that. He's thank behind you. the boards. Aaron Brunkgart. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you to Jack Birch, who uh, helps us out with uh, stuff digitally behind yeah. the scenes. And also, thank you to Daniel Avila, who helps us out with the TikTok channel. Yeah, and if this comes out next week, one reminder that Pound House Live is going to be September 4th at DynastyTypewriter.com. If you want to watch it virtually, it'll be streaming all around the world. Or you go to the show live in person and see me and Brent. And uh, Nick Thune and other people who are involved with the season. We're talking, you know, different people. We're talking different <laughs> people. We're going to see you in just a second if you're on the Patreon. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. You, oh, uh, you want another bass line? Doom. Okay. Doom, doom. I don't know that doom. one. It's um, my, my lips are sealed. It's not my lips are sealed. But, yeah, but I pretty much got it. When I you want another this. bass line? Pinball Wizard to Elton John? What's the band with the, the really good rush? Is it Rush? X, X, Y, Z. Oh, hold on, hold on. Is the Breeders Cannibal? Beck? No. It just sounded like it would be a Beck song. Duran Duran. Okay, let's try another one here. Okay. Oh, it's Jer it's Red Jeremy or something peppers. like that. It's, it's a Pearl Jam and it's Oh yeah, it's Pearl. It's, uh, it's like Black Sabbath or something. It's like Oh, it's Nirvana. Okay, it's um, you know, 
it's you know that's back in black right right okay. Wait, play that again for me. okay i got it i got it it's creep it's creep by uh, uh. You know, by radiohead oh okay it's done dun 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 uh, uh, I know this. Um, oh God, I know it. What, what am I? What am I, I? Why don't you just listen to it? I know it. I already know it already. Is the thing you know? I know it. I already know it. I know this. It's, uh, I know this song. I'll give you a hint. Cut it! Cut it! Cut it! That's a very <laughs> recognizable. That's easy. That's, that's, that's a great bass line too, by the way. It's one of these songs that's on, um, you know, Guitar Hero. That's okay. I'll tell you this. This show. Is also sponsored by Louisville Vegan Jerky. I know that it's. Um, I'll sing the melody of the vocal. Doug and Brett talking to I know each this. other. Doug and Brett. I don't know what song it is. Rubber Soul. I don't know. I heard a sitar in the background or something like that. I mean, and then here's the. Here's is the it Frank? Part. Is it Frankenstein? Now here's the big part. Talking on the Primus. Primus? Not Journey. Not Journey. It's not, not Primus. 80s. It's not Metall- Metallica. Okay, I got. I, I. But here's the problem. I heard. I, I heard can the, hear the I vocals heard. in the background. It's the, sh- the Pound Cast, the Pound Ghost. Yep. Oh, that's not maybe the song I was thinking of. 